Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Lead us, our Father, as we study today, honor thy precious word and save some precious soul in Radio Land. We ask it for Jesus' sake. And in his precious name, amen. Yesterday, we read in Acts chapter 12, and I discussed quite a few verses. In fact, I read more scripture yesterday than I've read any one day since we've been in the book of Acts. I read 19 verses, and we discussed these 19 verses. But I just hit them in high spots. I tried to give you the message contained in these verses because it had to do with Peter in jail. Now, James was beheaded. And Herod saw that it pleased the Jews when he killed James, so he put Peter in jail. And he was going to cut his head off, but God delivered him. And the reason God delivered him, the church got together and prayed for the deliverance of Peter. And God heard their prayers. Let me read a couple of verses here. In Acts 12 and verse 5, well, let's see, verse 5, yes. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Notice that. Prayer was made without ceasing. Now, Paul told the believers in Thessalonica to pray without ceasing. Prayer was made without ceasing for Peter. And God heard their prayers, and God sent an angel, and God released him, and God delivered him to his, to the people he loved and the people who loved him. They needed him, and God delivered him. Now, I tried to emphasize yesterday that I do not understand, I cannot understand, and I dare not try to explain to you why God allowed Herod to cut off the head of James and God sent an angel to deliver Peter. Now, that's God's business. Listen, don't you ever fret about what God does because God knows what He's doing. And I said yesterday, God can get more glory out of some people in jail than He can out of jail. God can get more glory out of the death of some people than he can the life of some people. And God can get more glory out of some people being sick than he does out of the the same person when they're well. Now, that's God's business. That's none of my business, so I don't worry about it. I don't understand it. I can't explain it. So why should I speculate? Now, in verse 12, this is Acts 12, 12, And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary... Mary, that, that is when Peter had thought, you know, he thought he saw a vision. He thought he was in a trance. But when he, when he finally woke up to the fact that he was very much awake and very much alive and he was free as the air, when he realized that, he went to the house of Mary. The mother of John, whose surname was Mark, John Mark, where many were gathered together praying. There were many people gathered together praying. Now, I'm going to say some things today that won't be appreciated by some. But I can't help it, beloved. God called me to preach, and God called me to preach the Word, and preach the Word I must. Now, we're commanded to pray one for another. And we are commanded to pray for the weak, and we're commanded to pray for those in authority. And we are carefully instructed in the Bible that we have not because we ask not and we ask and receive not because we ask amiss. And then Jesus assures us that if we are saved, if he abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will shall be done. Now that's John fifteen seven. That is a definite promise, a clear promise, an understandable promise. Anybody can understand that if they want to. If ye abide in me, that is, you're saved. And my words abide in you. You're consecrated. Then Jesus said, ask what you will, and it shall be done. Now that's clear. All right. Now I say this without hesitation, without reservation, and without apology. Some churches never have a prayer meeting. Why, you say, Brother Green, Brother Green, why, we have prayer meeting every Wednesday night. Most churches have another preaching service. Now, I'm not critical. I'm a preacher. I'm an evangelist. I preach all the time. Beloved, I tell you, for the past 32 years, I've preached and preached and preached and preached, and I'm still preaching. I preach all hours of the day and sometimes until midnight, and I mean it. 
I'm not against preaching. I'm for preaching. Heaven knows I'm for preaching. But beloved, we cannot get along without prayer. We cannot. We cannot. The reason I believe there are two reasons that God has honored this independent broadcast. You know, the, the gospel hour is not sponsored. We have no sponsors. We have no underwriters. I don't waste God's money buying stamps and form letters to be thrown in a waste basket. I don't do it, God bless you. This is a faith ministry, and all that I say about money, I say it on the radio. I tell you to mail the gift, and I'll send you the books, and that's it. Now, that's right, and that's the truth, and I know that it's hard for some of you people to believe that, but we do keep a very strict record of every gift that comes in. Your name is on a card. And that card is in a file, and your gifts are recorded. Now, that's for the government. That's for the government record, because we are a non-profit Christian corporation. And, of course, when you want to know how much you've given, if you write to us, we can look on your card, and we can tell you exactly how much money you've given to the gospel hour. We are a non-profit Christian corporation, and we must keep records. Now, I've said all that to say this. The only reason this gospel hour has been on the radio over 27 years, that's right, daily, over 27 years every day. We're on from coast to coast. We reach every state in the United States. We reach almost all of Canada. We reach Mexico, the islands. The only reason that this program is on the air and during the past 27 years plus We've spent millions of dollars for radio time. I'm talking about over the whole period. Millions of dollars for radio time. The only reason in this world that we've been able to do it, number one, I have read the gospel verse after verse. I've always, always preached on the radio just like I'm preaching now. Verse by verse, book by book, we study the Bible. That's all. We don't, we, we just read verse after verse. We discuss it. Then, that's the first reason God has kept this program on the air. Number two, number two, the second reason that God has kept this program on the air, we have thousands who pray for us every day. Thousands of people write to me and tell me that they pray for the gospel hour. One dear lady wrote me, I read the letter just two days ago. And this dear lady said, I pray every morning. I pray at lunch and I pray at bedtime. She said, I pray like Daniel. I pray for you. I pray for the gospel hour because it's my food. It's my meat. It's my spiritual diet every day. And I pray for God. This dear person said, I can't give much. I can't give but my little bit. But I pray for God to lay it on the heart of others, and that's the reason we're on there. Now, I'm preaching today on prayer, 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 prayer. And I said, I said, some churches just have another preaching service on Wednesday night. You don't have a prayer meeting. A preaching service is a time when God's man or the evangelist, the past evangelist, missionary, somebody goes in the pulpit and preaches. Now, a prayer meeting is when you either read or you quote some scripture, let the different people quote prayer promises or verses, and you get down on your knees. I said on your knees. Yes, sir, I can show you two dozen scriptures in the Bible where people got on their knees. Paul knelt down. He got down on his knees. I, Stephen knelt down. He got on his knees. I can give you scripture after scripture after scripture where people got on their knees. I believe in getting on your knees. Now, there are some people who can't get on their knees. They are physically handicapped. They have rheumatism. They have arthritis. They can't kneel. That's all right. That's all right. God will hear you praying, uh, hear your prayer, and you can pray sitting, standing, walking, running, flying in an automobile in a submarine. It doesn't make difference. You can pray, but when it's possible, you should get on your knees. Now, a prayer meeting is when you meet in God's house or in a home we call cottage prayer meetings. They're not a thing in the world, but cottage preaching services. That's all they are, cottage preaching services. Then I want to say this is sad but so, but on Sunday morning sometime, when the dear pastor calls on someone to pray, that dear person preaches a sermon in prayer. Fifteen minutes they pray. Listen, when a man prays fifteen minutes in public, you can mark it down. He didn't pray before he left home. He didn't pray the night before. And the chances are he didn't pray that whole week. He's catching up. Listen, public prayers should be very short. I'm talking about on Sunday morning. Now, Wednesday night, when you have your prayer meeting, you should have a solid hour of prayer. Now, I, listen, I... 
I'm convicted in my heart and convinced in my soul that the weak point in the church today, and I'm talking about the true church, I'm talking about churches, local churches, where God's man is the pastor and God's word is preached. The weak point is the prayer meeting. You can have a revival without preaching. You can have a revival without preaching, but you can't have a revival without praying. Now, I said some churches never have a prayer meeting, and it's a truth, and you know it's a truth. Now, I want you to look at uh, Acts 13 and verse 3, and listen what we have. As they ministered, this is verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Now look at verse 3, and we'll be in this chapter now in just a few days. In verse 3, this is Acts 13, 3, And when they had fasted, well, brother, my, my. Uh, now I'm not critical. I'm not critical. I enjoy fellowship. I enjoy picnics. I enjoy uh, going to a nice, clean cafeteria where they don't sell liquor. And I don't, I, I don't believe a church group ought to go anywhere and have a church uh, uh, fellowship supper where they sell liquor. I don't believe God's church. I don't believe a group uh, of men or a Sunday school class should go to a place and have a church uh, fellowship supper where they sell liquor. Now, there are some nice restaurants and cafeterias where you can rent a room or get a room and go with your Sunday school class and have a fellowship supper, and I love that. I believe in it. I believe it's right. I believe it can be a, a, a wonderful, wonderful asset to the church. But today, today most churches can't have anything unless they serve. Now in this day, instead of serving, they fasted, they fasted, they didn't eat. They had a place to fast and they prayed. Now watch it. So when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. In other words, when they sent out Paul and Barnabas as home missionaries, they had a fast and a prayer meeting, and they prayed for them and laid their hands on them and asked God to bless them and sent them on their way. Now, look at Acts chapter 20, and we find a very interesting verse. The line, Well, it's verse 36 in Acts 20 and verse 36. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and he prayed with them all, and they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake that they should see his face no more, and they accompanied him under the ship. Now, Paul had just warned them about false prophets and false teachers and thieves and, and wolves in sheep's clothing. And then he kneeled down, he kneeled down. He got down on his knees, glory to God. Got down on his knees and he prayed. And they wept and they fell on his neck and they kissed him. Now in Acts 6 and in verse 6 we find that when they elected the first deacons, they had a prayer meeting. In Acts 6, 6, whom they set before the apostles and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. They prayed. Now, beloved, I say again, I say again. I believe public prayers on Sunday morning, Sunday night, public prayers in the Sunday school, public prayers in any meeting should be short and to the point. You study the public prayers of Jesus. Study the public prayers of Jesus and you'll find they are very short. But then just before he called his apostles, he prayed all night long. But it's not recorded. We don't have recorded. We have the, we have many prayers of Jesus recorded, short prayers, but when he prayed all night, we don't have the record. Uh, because he had such a burden, he had such a tremendous burden that he could not, he could not get from under the burden. He prayed all night long, talking to his father. If, if Jesus Christ need to pray all night, uh, how much more do you and how much more do I need to pray all night? I told you briefly just a few days ago, I guess it's been a week or more now, uh, I was strangely burdened uh, some, some weeks ago now. I was strangely burdened. And I prayed nightly. I prayed and I kept on praying. And my wife mentioned why I was, asked me why I was praying about this one thing. And I won't miss you today. I kept on praying. And then God worked a miracle. I told you about it on the radio the other day. Most of you heard it. Some of you probably didn't. But God worked a miracle in my family. And God gave me such a gigantic, tremendous answer to prayer that it has encouraged me to pray more than I've ever prayed. I say this. I'm 52. I've been preaching 32 years. 
I've been on the radio over 27 years. Beloved, the older I get. Well, you say, Brother Green, now here's what some of you would think. Brother Green, you've studied the Bible so long and you've prayed so much. I guess now you just kind of coast along. You don't have to study. Listen, I say the truth, I lie not. If I don't live to finish this message, if I do not live to finish this message, since I started the series on Acts, I've studied more and prayed more in these past five months that we've been on Acts. I've prayed more and studied more, and I'm not saying this in a self-righteous way. I'm preaching on prayer. But, beloved, the older I get and the longer I study the Bible, the more I feel the need of study and the more I feel the need of prayer. I've prayed more and studied more in the past five months than I have in the last two years. Now, that's right. That's right, and I confess it. God has burdened me as I've never been burdened since I've been preaching the gospel on the radio or in meetings. Now, I wish that I had time. I I can't finish this. I want you to look at Acts 4, and I want you to read with me, please, verse 29. Acts 4 and verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and the signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Brother Green, you don't believe in the filling. Yes, I've been filled a hundred times over. I I never come to the radio. I never go to the pulpit. I never preach a sermon that I don't pray, Oh, God, fill me afresh. Oh, God, fill me with thy spirit. And they prayed, and the place was filled. And they were filled on the day of Pentecost. The room was filled. But we don't read of that anymore. That's when he came the first time. The room was filled. Here, they prayed, and they were filled. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now, a preacher, a preacher who is a compromiser and a soft soaper is not a praying preacher. You can mark that down. When a minister stays alone with God in prayer, he don't apologize for preaching this word. He preaches it without fear, without favor, and without apology. I say again, as I bring this message to a close, the number one need in the church of the living God today is prayer. We have more preaching than we've ever had and less praying. We have more evangelism. I mean evangelists preaching on the radio, in churches, in tents, in tabernacles, in city auditoriums, everywhere on the sun. Preaching, 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 preaching. But we have more sin, more ungodliness than we've ever had. We need more praying. The number one need in the church today is prayer. Do you have a prayer meeting where you go to church? If you don't, you should. Do you pray in secret? Do you go in the closet in your home, in your bedroom, or in the closed closet, or in some room and shut the door and get on your knees and talk to God? If you don't, you ought to. If you don't, begin today. Father, thank God for those who prayed for Peter. Thank God for Mary and for her home and the many who gathered and prayed and God heard and answered their prayer. Now, Father, burden Christians to pray for this unworthy preacher. Pray for themselves. Pray for their loved ones. Burden Christians to pray today as we've never been burdened before. In Jesus' name, amen.